you seen this video from OpenAI? This one or this one? It is crazy. I know. And creators are finally reacting. This is not real. And oh, it's just getting started because AI has taken a lot of jobs from artists. And big corpos like Wake Up EA have used AI art that was trained on artist work without their consent and with zero compensations. And yeah, that sounds like something straight out of Cyberpunk 2077. I'm looking at you, Arasaka. And with the recent layoffs from big companies, artists are going crazy. And this isn't one of those videos that glaze artists are completely dunks on AI, but it tells the story from an artist's perspective. And why no one cares about generative art? Because this is our inevitable future. Oh, but there's a new big boy on the block who might actually be able to poison and destroy AI art forever. Dolly was released in around January 2021, way before other popular AI image gen tools. I made Johnny in July, which is arguably the most popular AI gen tool, which uses Discord, the app for DGENs, believe it or not, to generate prompts for the images for a small, small fee of 10 bucks, which makes this tech easily accessible to a lot of people, including 10 year old Twitter babies. And the story of modern AI image generation tools began in April 2022, which marked an insane shift in the AI scene. The inception of Dolly in April, however, kickstarted a revolution in the AI assisted image creation which blew a lot of minds as well as a lot of pockets due to the Nigerian princes and this tool developed by OpenAI had the ability to generate unique complex visuals from simple textual prompts further blurring the line between art and tech. But oh, alongside these developments of ChatGBT the mastermind that kickstarted the AI decade of the 2020s. They took the models from a non-profit organization this company which has a database of over 5 billion images which is like 15 united states or about four africans this organization was meant to use images from the internet for just research so it wasn't much to worry about right but trust capitalism these ai companies took the open source data and trained their models on it adobe firefly trained their own models on adobe's licensed stock images and the public domain which only contain copyrighted images that are expired this just proves that it's actually actually possible to make an ai tool that doesn't make artist staff unlike mid journey which are ripping artists off I'm not gonna lie as an artist who barely had any internet fame i wasn't worried my ass was gonna get stolen till i started seeing other relatively small artists have their work copied by ai then reality set it and we might actually be replaced and a couple weeks ago we had sora which drove content creators nuts the feeling of impending doom the helpless situation of being possibly replaced by sora Drove a lot to talk about it on YouTube. But how do these AI tools generate images? In monkey speak, diffusion model takes images from internet and the captions, make an image from the prompt, from a visual field of noise like TV static, subtracts the noise, and in steps, boom, final image. That made zero sense. <laughs> but Dali works in almost the same way. For if it just takes images from the internet, then why the fuck are artists bitching about it? You see, you can generate a drawing to look like any artist you want. Van Gogh, Da Vinci, heck, even artists that are still alive, like Sam Dos Farts. I mean Sam Dos Arts. And these artists, yeah, thousands upon thousands of artists. I know you might be thinking, well, there are other uses for AI gen tools like storytelling, ads, YouTube videos. Creators like William Marie Johnson use AI images in his videos for storytelling and not gonna lie, they're kind of fun to watch. And YouTubers like Rationality Rules, but whether they should have commissioned real artists to make the arts instead of using AI is the tricky part. You see, AI gen tools feel like having superpowers to non-artists, aka normies <laughs> like you, which unlocks creativity in creators like our favorite TikTok storyteller. However, Taking the images from a non-profit and harming artists in the process is where we have a problem because we didn't consent and aren't getting paid for the art which the AI uses and that's part of why artists are fighting back. But why do most people care? Well, it's really simple. Take a look at the video content creators who've started to talk about Sora when it's got into the video content creation sphere. And simply put, unless it's a threat to you, you probably wouldn't care. Or unless it's coming for your 9 to 5 or your 5 gigs, you wouldn't give a shit. Or maybe when AI starts making children books, that's when you or parents will care. Oh wait, it has. A couple weeks ago, I made a video about the book Jazza bought, but why don't you just hear it yourself from the man? I have a story to tell. I got scammed. <laughs> I got served this ad for a book on like drawing and I bought it. I, I went to the website um, and bought the bundle of four because I thought, hey, that book looks good. Spent 95 US dollars. Which I'm gonna start with, uh, first of all, it arrives like this. You get four PDFs and I'm just gonna open the first one I opened, which was guidebook four. Here it is, female illustration, comic guidebook series. 
Okay, so we got some some females here. There is page one, female. And then we just have a bunch of eyes. Eye, front, female. I'm like, this is the first time I'm flicking through this. I'm like, oh, okay. Later in this video, I will show you how to use a new program to actually stop AI from ruining artists' lives. The future of AI relies on artists' creativity, yet condemning them to starvation is a future no one desires. Except you're a 12 year old Twitter user. With Mid Journey, you can upload styles you want to replicate for the model to help you steal even better. And when these models are trained with our data, they won't forget forever. But if you're at this part of the video and you still don't think AI is being developed to replace artists, take a look at this tweet where artists were fired and replaced by an AI user. But early in January, three artists, Sarah Anderson, Kelly McKinnon, and Carla Ortiz, sued the company in one of the first of several lawsuits that have been filed by copyright owners against tech companies over the alleged use of their work in AI training. And artists have actually secured a small but meaningful win in their lawsuits against generative AI, which is considered the leading case over uncompensated and unauthorized use of billions of images downloaded from the internet to train their freaking AI systems. And heck, Kelly even said, I had rent due today, I am $200 short. That's how desperate things are right now. And it just doesn't feel right. Going back to that tweet, AI users charged more money and now the company is trying to reconcile with real artists again. You might be thinking artists might finally win, but not so fast. With this new tool, we might be able to actually win the war against AI. Let me introduce you to Nightshade. Okay, this is how it works. For example, your eyes might see an image of Kaisen art in Nigeria, largely unchanged, but an AI model might see an ugly ass leather purse lying in the grass. When this AI is trained on a sufficient number of shaded images that include Kaisen art, this model will become increasingly convinced Kaisen that looks brown, leathery, has handles, and has smooth side pockets with a zipper, and perhaps a lovely brand logo. But that's basically how it works. And with enough of these poisoned images, we might actually be able to win by poisoning AI. But how about we test that for ourselves? If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to subscribe, and more importantly, drop a like so the YouTube AI algorithm recommends more of my videos to you. So now for the test phase. We'll be using three different drawings of mine with varying levels of complexity to see how the AI tool works and how much it distorts it. So we'll start with a simple piece like this one. So we'll just drag and drop, okay? Oh, we already tagged it, we're gone already. Oh, that's pretty good, we already tagged it. Uh, okay, intensity, uh, let's go with default. Render quality, faster, five minutes, medium 10 minutes. My GPU is like four GB and I think the required is probably around five. I think that's the minimum, so. That's probably the problem. Okay, seems to be crafting. It says shade will take about 30 minutes, so I guess cue the elevator music. All three of them took about an hour and 30 minutes for everything, about 30 minutes each. Let's just go straight to the breakdown. Let's start with a simple piece. The first thing that stands out to me here is this simple artifact right here. That was the first thing that stood out to me. And the closer you look, the more they just seem to pop up like yeah, I guess this is probably what it's doing to confuse the AI algorithm. Uh, but the face looks okay. It's a little bit here. Uh, but yeah, if you compare that to the original, right, there's none of that. Literally none of that. However, I would say it's not that bad. But in high value areas like here and here, it stands out pretty well. On the skin here, here it doesn't doesn't look that bad. Or here it doesn't look that bad. But when it's like bright, yeah, it's not a lot. Right, let's go to the next one. I think we can see the same pattern of like of artifacts. But I would say here it's not actually that bad. Probably because it gives some sort of like texture to like the course that she has going on here. But I think it looks pretty good. Obviously, if you zoom in, you probably start seeing shit like this, start seeing shit like this. Yeah, but from a distance, it actually looks pretty, pretty good. I can't lie. Kind of impressed. Again, I think it just takes a lot, like a lot of zooming in to actually like, oh yeah, to actually see a lot of those things. However, I did render it on like the fast setting because my PC can handle it. So that's probably why it's this obvious. And for the last one, this my piece. And yeah, same thing. It's not that bad here. I actually add some sort of like noise and texture to the light here and also a little bit to the shadow it actually adds this cool texture i can't lie to these kind of dark pieces but it's not that bad here it's just really really in your face when it's in like high value areas like here 
uh, here's not that bad as well but like in really really high value areas yeah it kind of stands out but for this particular piece here it's not that bad it's not that bad pretty impressed i'd say let me know what you all think in the comments because this tool is insane i think in the future it would be greatly helpful if this tool can be added innately into programs like clip studio paint procreate or even photoshop to help safeguard against ai theft however this deck is far from being perfect and i guess we'll have to just wait and see how good this text gets and if you're still trying to overthrow the ai overloads you definitely need to check out this video about my top 10 digital art tips from everything i've learned in 2023